Lesson 4. Entanglement. In this lesson, we will finally learn about entanglement, a special, a very unique uh, feature of quantum mechanics. We will begin by demonstrating how strange entanglement can be and how counter counterintuitive it can be. Then we will move on to the definition of what entangled states are. And then we will talk about a particular class of entangled states called Bell states, which play a very important role in quantum communication and quantum computation. And then finally, we will finish by framing entanglement as a resource for computational and communication tasks. So let's begin. Step one, CHSH game. So as I said, we will begin with a game. And the rules of the game are the following. Consider two players which are cooperating. They're players A and B. And they are trying to win a game that's being refereed by another person. Let's call them R. And the game begins with R uh, generating two classical bits, X and Y, fully at random, and sending the X bit to player A and the Y bit to player B. Then the players A and B, they reply with their own classical bits. A replies with A, and B replies with bit B. And they win uh, one round of the game if the product of the uh, X and Y, so X dot Y, is equal to the binary sum of bits A and B. But there is one very important uh, constraint, and that is that once the game begins, players A and B are not allowed to communicate. You see, if they could communicate, a could just tell B, hey, my uh, bit X is equal to zero or is equal to one. And they could very easily win every game, every round. But this doesn't mean that they are not cooperating. Before the game begins, they can actually decide on their strategy or what bits and in what fashion they can uh, output. So let's have a look how this actually works in practice. So let's say, for example, that uh, X is equal to zero, Y is equal to one. That means that the product, 0 times 1, is just 0. And A replies with its bit, which is 0, and B replies with a 1. And the, um, the binary sum of 0 and 1 is also 1. We see that 0 and 1 are not equal, therefore the players A and B lose this particular round. In the next round, maybe X and Y are still, are still 0 and 1. But this time A and B, they reply with 1, 1. So the binary sum of 1, 1 is a 0, so we see that they satisfy the winning condition. X dot B is equal to A binary plus B. Therefore, they win. In round three, maybe the X and Y actually change. They're both one. And A and B reply with one, and they reply with zero. In this case, we can also still see again that they win because the product of X and Y is equal to the binary sum of A and B. And they keep going on and on like this. But the main question is, should, what strategy should A and B follow in order to maximize their win rate? Of course, they could just uh, randomly generate their bits and be satisfied that sometimes they win and sometimes they lose. But our players are actually competitive and they try to win every single round. So let's see if that's actually possible. Let's generate this table for all the possible inputs that the referee can distribute uh, to A and B. So we've got 0, 0. 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So here we have the products. And here we have some values of A, X, and B, Y. We, now we are calling them A, X because we are saying that the uh, output A, the bit A, can actually depend on the bit uh, X that the player A received. And similarly, B can depend on the uh, um, uh, bit Y that uh, B receives from the referee. You can try and substitute any values for A, uh, AX and uh, BY. And in fact, you will see that they cannot satisfy the winning condition all the time. It's just inevitable that in some cases they will lose. But if you notice, in these three cases, the product of X and Y is always zero. It's only in this uh, uh, last case when it's one. So in fact, what players A and B can do is they can just say, no matter what X and no matter what Y we received, we will always reply with uh, um, output zero. So A is always zero, B is always zero. 
And in that case, they win the game uh, um, three out of four times. And you can uh, um, be a little bit more mathematical, you can go through the uh, proofs, and you can prove that if, even, in fact, if they follow any other strategy, they cannot go higher than this 75% win rate. This was using a classical strategy. Now, what if we implement a quantum strategy? First of all, what is a quantum strategy? Well, one strategy is that uh, A and B can share a quantum state. And for concreteness, we can assume that the state that they share is a particular superposition of 0, 0 and plus 1. Plus, uh, sorry, uh, 1, 1. And it's an equal superposition. And then what A and B does is the following. If A receives x is equal to 0, then it measures its qubit in the z basis. If it receives 1, it will measure in the x basis. And if the outcome of the, either of the measurements is plus 1, it sets A equals to 0 and replies with this bit. On the other hand, if it's minus 1, then it will reply with a 1. And B follows a similar strategy, but instead of measuring in the z and x, it measures in a rotated basis. So if in the zx or z minus x. And again, it replies with b equals to 0 if the measurement outcome is plus 1, and b equals to 1 if the measurement outcome is minus 1. And in fact, if, they, if a and b follow this strategy, they can achieve a win rate of 85%. It's a 10% increase over classical strategy. So we will see later that this state is actually a very special state that we will encounter again and again and again.